was still good to me. And I'm not the only one who could have testified to that because it's a lot of us sitting in here, there's a lot of us online that can say that he's been so good to us. That he's been good to us that we've been to our own self. When I wanted to throw in the child, he wouldn't let me. When I wanted to give up, he wouldn't let me.
metaphor real. My strong tower, my fortress, my shield. Anybody thankful for them today? Hallelujah. Don't fool me now. Anybody thankful? Brought you through a whole month. Allowed you to see this fifth Sunday in January. It's cold outside, but God is still good. Amen. Amen. Listen, we have a treat for you today. We have one of our own pastor, Chevron's. I'll be bringing a word for you today. So I'm going to get out of your way. I know he has a fiery word for God's people. Amen. Can we praise God as the man of God come forward? Christ 
and accepting him as your personal savior, amen, to be saved, that it looked like that there's a little bit more to it than that. It looked like I should be doing something to help, amen, along the way. And we seem, amen, to sometimes think, amen, that if I dress a certain way, amen, or amen, talk a certain way or whatever, amen, then this, amen, is going to help me to be saved. If I pay enough money in the church, if I go, amen, to church all the time, if I really get involved, amen, with every ministry of my, amen, part, amen, in the church, amen, this will help me to be saved. But I want you to know, amen, that, amen, believing in Jesus Christ, and accepting him as your personal savior is a done deal. Yeah. It teaches, amen, that, amen, God's grace and human effort, amen, was required for salvation, was just continually flowing, amen, in the New Testament church, amen. The first part of chapter 5 deals with circumcision and how its practice services no pur purpose when it comes to being saved. Amen. They kept emphasizing, amen, that you need to still be circumcised according to the law of Moses to be saved. But Paul kept emphasizing that it doesn't really serve a purpose when it comes down to salvation. Paul asked them that who have allowed, who have they allowed to come along, amen, and fool them with some other gospel, with some other teaching, a doctrine of legalism, amen, that was so prevalent and it still is today. Amen. I don't know in that way you've been, but I know where I've been, amen. And I've been in church mostly all of my life, amen. I came up, amen, from Mobile, Alabama, amen, to live in Monroe at the age of seven. And the first thing that my grandmother did to me, amen, which was I was not used to it, she, amen, took me to church. Mama wasn't a church going woman, and dad, although his father was a preacher himself, he had strayed away from the church, and he wasn't a church going man. But my grandmother wanted to make sure, boy, you going to church. And so, amen, amen, I united with the Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church, amen, amen, and at this time I'm still a part of that church, amen. But amen, I got involved, amen, later on in the years, amen, with Pentecostalism. And amen, they taught me, amen, to, that I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. They also taught me that I need to stop doing this and stop doing that in order to be saved. Couldn't go here, couldn't go there in order to be saved. But later on, amen, I began to study by myself. And I began to find out, amen, that legalism has no place, amen, in the church. Amen, that all I truly had to do was believe in Jesus Christ, amen, and accept him as my personal Savior. And if I truly believed in him, he would definitely come inside of me and he would make a difference on the inside. I no longer had to worry about pulling up with this and putting this on and doing this and doing that, amen. He, amen, would begin to deal with my heart because I found out that it was not an outside matter, but that it was an inside matter. Folks come to church all the time. They sing the songs of Zion and still go out to church, amen, and live, amen, like this. Why? Because, amen, it's just a religious thing for them and it's not an inside job. If God don't change you, you can't be changed. You certainly can't change yourself. And to those of us, amen, amen, who are striving against this flesh, we find that it's a constant battle. Paul tells us on down in the other part, amen, of the fifth chapter, of Amen Galatians, Amen. So I find this, I mean, and Lord and Word, excuse me, Proverbs. All I want to do good, excuse me again, Romans, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, Paul said, but I see that there is another law that's working on the inside of me. Waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretch man that I am, Paul said. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? 
in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, Paul and then talked about the wrestle and the tussle with sin. How sin and then wants to take control of you. How sin and then wants amen, to get the best of you. And he said, oh rich man that I am, I see that I desire to do good, but when I get ready to do good, evil is present, amen. I don't want to cuss, amen, but look like I can't help but cuss. I don't want to sap you crazy, but look like when you make me mad, I want to jump you and sap you crazy. I don't want to have an attitude, but the attitude, amen, wants to take control of me. Oh, rich man that I am, who going to change me? Who going to save this body from sin? But I'm glad to know Paul gave some help, amen. He gave some hope for in the 25th verse of the 7th chapter of Romans, he said, thanks be to God who delivered me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm wrestling, amen, with something, amen. I'm tussling, amen, with some issues, but I'm coming through it. One thing is for sure. If we are really honest with ourselves, we worry so much about what somebody else thinks. Amen. Whether or not they see us, amen, a certain way. Amen. But if we're truly honest with ourselves, we are definitely in a war between the will of the spirit and the will of the flesh. In my early days, the saints used to tell us, amen, we being the young ones at that time, Amen. I came into Pentecostalism at the age of 17 years old. Amen. And the old saints used to say, Amen, get up and testify. I thank God for being saved and sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost, wrapped with a mighty burning fire, but of everything that's not, amen, like Christ. And they used to say that is you are truly saved that you don't really sin. If you truly say they say you don't sin. And had me believing that when you do sin, the Holy Ghost jumps out of you. And they would say your wrong doing put you out of the church and your right doing put you in the church. And I was in for a rude awakening, amen. As I began to live, amen, this holy, righteous way. I, they had me feeling like the Holy Ghost was a yo-yo. And so if I said the wrong thing, the Holy Ghost would step out of me. And when I repented, he would step back in me. But thanks be to God, I found out later when I studied the word of God. For the Bible says, study to show myself a proof a workman that need not be ashamed rightly that by the word of truth we need to take the time in him that instead of going by what I say then get your Bible out in him read your Bible for yourself amen and see what God is saying to you amen I found out amen that just because I may not amen not make the mark today amen the Holy Ghost don't step out of me for he said in his word, I know I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I'm not going to leave you. If there's any leaving in it to be done in it, it'll be you leaving me. It'll be you walking away from me. But if I need you in it, he that has begun a good work in it will bring it unto completion in it. I'm going to stick with you in it when you ain't just like Christ. I'm going to stick with you, amen, when you don't say all the right things. I'm going to stick with you, amen, when you're acting like a fool. I'm going to still be right there, nurturing you, loving on you, and changing you from earth to earth, amen, from grace to grace, and from glory to glory. God, and I found out, he stuck with me all down through the years. As I was growing and in the process, and I found out, amen, that even over 30 some years ago, that I'm still growing and I'm still in the process. Truth be told to us, we're in the process. And Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this one thing, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion. 
Amen. Amen. I'm wrestling with something. Amen. And truth be told, you wrestling with something. Amen. But you're coming through it. Amen. If you persevere, if you press on and you don't give up, amen. You're coming through this, amen. You're coming out of this. The enemy may be trying to hold you down and disencourage you and make you feel like you're not even saved. But you got to believe I'm coming out. I'm coming out. We are in this process until completion, until we leave this earth. Ain't no perfect person in here. And if you're perfect, amen, you think you're perfect, you better check yourself. Amen. We either sin by omitting or we sin by committing. In other words, amen, we sin sometimes when we should do. And we know we should do. But for whatever reason, we draw back and we don't do. And sometimes we sin by committing when we know amen, that thing ain't right. And yet we find ourselves weakening on that moment and we go ahead and do it anyhow. You know how it is, amen. I'll refresh your memory because sometimes our memory is short, amen. You know how we say, I shouldn't say this, amen. I just feel like I ought not say this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. You know that phrase, amen, where that's the Holy Ghost telling you, shut your mouth. Don't say that. But you get bold in yourself and say, I'm going to say it anyhow. Well, what have you done? You've done sin just that easy. He says in Galatians 5, 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, and revelings. Somewhere within the confines of what I just described, we there. You don't believe it, amen. Look those words up. Somewhere in those confines of those words, you there. And then you're wrestling. Uh, you don't tell everybody your business. Amen. And, and, and right now, amen, you got a sanctified look on you. Right now, you got that halo around your head, amen. Amen. But when ain't nobody looking, amen, and when the pastor ain't around, amen, and when sister so-and-so ain't there, and mother ain't on the phone with you, amen, you know sometimes you get off into things that you shouldn't get off into. You look at stuff that you shouldn't look at. You think stuff that you shouldn't allow yourself to think. You act ways that you shouldn't allow yourself to act. So somewhere in that description of the flesh you're wrestling. And the devil wants you to sometimes to get to the point you just want to give up. You just say this ain't no use. Amen. Just don't look like I'm going to overcome. Amen. This old amen. Amen. Loose tongue I got. And it don't amen seem like I'm going to overcome. Amen. These amen old feelings on the inside that I have. And, and it's so hard for me to like amen. Amen. When someone do me wrong. Amen. To let that thing go. And to forgive them and go about my business. Amen. Uh, I don't know you when I wrestle with that. Amen. But I wrestle with that sometimes. Amen. Sometimes folks do me low down and dirty. Amen. And amen. I find that I have to pray. And I have to pray hard. Lord. Amen. Help me forgive. Amen. That person. I see brother love coming. And my bosom goes up burning. And my heart. Amen. Gets on fire. Because I want to tell him something. Amen. Amen. But then I have to pray. Lord. Help me to forgive him, even if he don't say, forgive me, brother. To forgive him and let it go. You see, forgiveness ain't no brother love. The forgiveness is for me. You can't, amen, keep going, amen, with all this heavy stuff on you. You got to let it go. Hallelujah. So, amen, what is the struggle? Amen, Paul said, I beat him. I beat my body. 1 Corinthians 9, amen, chapter 9, and verse 26 through 27, he reads, amen, it reads and says, Paul said, therefore, I do not run aimlessly. 
Amen. I don't, amen, just run haphazardly. I don't just run, amen, caught, amen, without caution, amen. He said, I do not fight like I'm beating the air. No, he said, I discipline my body and make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself, and it will not be disqualified. It is possible for me to preach the word, amen, and don't deal with what's going on in me. And you can get saved off of the word. You can get full of the Holy Ghost off of the word, amen, but because I'm not dealing with me and my issues, amen, you can go in there to heaven and I can go straight on to hell because I'm not dealing. So Paul said, what I do, I preach the word to you and I beat myself, amen, under subjection, amen. I make that temper, amen, come under subjection. I make that tongue come under subjection. Why? Because I got power, amen, in the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, to bring this flesh. Hallelujah, under subjection. Colossians 3 and 5 says, mortify. In other words, kill it. Amen. Therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, amen, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concoctions, and covetousness, which is idolatry, idolatry, and mortify. Amen. Those deeds of the flesh, amen. Amen. Stop it. Get rid of it. Amen. It is with his word. That he will wash me and sanctify me. John 15 and 3 says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Ephesians 5 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse the church, amen, with the washing of the water by the word, amen. It is by God's word. As the word goes to pull it out, amen, I let the word wash me and I let the word cleanse me and I let the word change. You see, you can't change me. Dr. Hickabottom can't change me. The psychologist can't change me. My mama couldn't change me. Amen. Nobody can change me like Jesus. Amen. Somebody composed a song that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Nobody, nobody can do you like Jesus. He'll come down into your heart at your invitation. And he began to change the way your heart is. The word of God tells us, amen, that he changes us. From grace to grace and glory to glory. Yes, we're in a wrestle, but we're coming through this. Please, the songwriter says, be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. When he gets through with me, I shall come. I shall come forth. Your goal. Are you being tried in the fire? Well, Paul says, turn it out, John. When you're going through different temptations, when you're going through different troubles, amen. When your flesh is acting up, amen. When the devil is cutting up, amen. And they count it all, John, amen. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. I want you to know as you go in this process, as you wrestle, amen. As you come through this, amen. There's got to be some changes made. And then God allows, amen, and the things that happen to us, amen, to do what, amen, to change us, amen. When I was in school, amen, in college, amen, trying to get me some higher learning, amen, I had to go through the process. I couldn't stop, amen, I couldn't come out of my mama's womb and go right on to college, amen. But I had to go through first and second grade. I had to go, amen, through, amen, and then I prepared myself for college, amen. And God took me through college, amen. Gave me good grades in college. And what was he doing, amen? What were the teachers doing? They were processing me, amen, for the job that I wanted, amen, to do the things that I desired, amen. God processes us, amen. We pray to him sometimes. Lord, change me. Lord, help me to be what you want me to be. But we don't understand. It's not a ram and boom. It's not an amen, my amen, amen, power, amen, that knocks us down, amen. And when we get up, amen, we are changing, amen. But it's a process, amen. We start with baby steps, and then we start walking, and then we start running. After a while, amen, through leaps and bounds, amen, we become, amen, more and more. Likewise. 
Yeah. We war against sin in our members. But we are more than conquerors through him that love us. I'm watching them, amen. But amen, I'm going through it, amen. I'm coming through this, amen. You got to look at the mirror. And then when discouragement want to sit in and talk to yourself, amen. And say, self, amen. Sometimes self is at home. Amen. I want you to know, self, that you yet are going through. But you're coming through, amen. This, amen. This, amen, too, shall pass, amen. Amen. It will get better after a while, amen. Nothing stays the same, amen. Everything must change. So we stay in the press because we're going through this. Folks may talk about you. Just let them go ahead and talk, amen. As you, amen, come through this. And then Jesus, amen, the Son of God, amen, was carried, amen, from Judgment Hall. You see, when Jesus came down on this earth, amen, I guess, amen, that if he had wanted to do it that way, amen, he could have, amen, amen, went on and made, amen, some changes and not go to the cross. Amen. But he knew that there must be a process. He came as a baby. He preached when he was young. He was carried from judgment hall to judgment hall. He was whipped, amen, and enlightened, amen, beyond even recognition. Amen. He was taken, amen, and made to carry, amen, a cross, amen, up God, God, amen, to the place called a stone where they laid him down. They stretched him wide. They hung him high between two knees. But it was a process. He was wrestling for mankind. Wrestling with the evil power of this world. He wrestled when he was whipped. He could have called. 10,000 of his angels, but he chose the cross to die. He didn't have to do it, but he did. They hung him high, stretched him wide between two feet. He hung his head and he died. But after the process, after the wrestle, he came through. Cause early, early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up. He got up. And he just didn't just get up, but he got up. Wow, power and might in his hands, both in heaven. I'm wrestling, but I'm coming through this. Hey! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! I felt that. Yeah! I'm wrestling, but I'm coming through this. Wrestling on the job, but I'm coming through this. Wrestling with the finances, but I'm coming through this. Wrestling with my health, but I'm coming through this. Wrestling with relationships, but I'm coming through this. Wrestling with my attitude, but I'm coming through this. Wrestling with my big mouth, but I'm coming through this. I'm coming through this. I'm coming through this. Because I can do all things. All things. All things. All things. All things. All things. Do what? That strength in me. I'm wrestling, but I'm coming through this. Sometimes you can't just think it, Pastor Love, you know. Sometimes you gotta say it out loud. If you gotta go way down there to your little Haven house down in the woods, and then where your camp house at, and so folks don't think you're crazy. Run on down there, unlock that door, close that door, and with a loud voice, tell that devil. I'm blessed, but I'm coming. I'm coming through. I'm coming through.
thrive. I'm, 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 I'm excited about it. We're going to have t-shirts for this for the month, so if you desire a t-shirt, get with Sister Solitaire. But this is a this is our word for GLF for the entire year, thrive. Amen. Amen. We're going to break that thing down. So, amen. Come out and worship with us for the month of February. Bring somebody with you. We thank you for coming. I know it's cold. You got you have every reason to stay at home, but you came out in yeah. And I, I want to just tell you thank you. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, neighbor. I love you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, look at another neighbor say,